Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to another art class. I'm Charlie Newton, and this is Flash. Well, today we have another fun project to do. We're going to draw with ink pens. Maybe you've never drawn with an ink pen before, so you can just use a normal ink pen. Splash Kids, I had put an ink pen into your uh, art package. But you can use just a regular ink pen. If you don't have an ink pen, you can do the same thing with pencil. But I suggest you using an ink pen or a Sharpie or whatever. Now, remember, as always, in art class, we are practicing. So this is the time to make mistakes. This is the time to mess up. No problem. You can always start over. Um, many times for artists, we may do uh, 10, 12 sketches before we even attempt to do the original work of art. And then when we do the finished piece of art, we still may not like it. The fun is in the process. The fun is in learning. The fun is in getting better and better. So remember, I've been doing this for 50 years. <laughs> so, and I'm still learning. And I'm still, hopefully, I'm getting a little bit better. So don't judge yourself. In drawing with ink, there's two ways to go about it. You could do a sketch in pencil first and make the mistakes and uh, clean up your mistakes. Or you can do it the way we're going to do it. We're going to draw, draw straight with an ink pen so there will be no erasing. We will make mistakes. I will make mistakes. It's a practice that's going to help your facility. What I mean by facility, your hand and your eye and your mind. It's going to help you to become more precise in what you see and the way you portray what you see. But it's also fun to put limitations on yourself and see how well you can do with it. So maybe in the future we'll do an ink, a finished ink drawing. When I use the word finished, I mean this is the work of art. So we're putting all our skills and know-how into it and uh, we try to make sure that the end product is going to be perfect. But that's not what we do in art class usually. Okay, so we're just going to have fun drawing with an ink pen. Let's get started. First, I want to show you the techniques that we're going to use. And you can get a scrap sheet of paper to practice these techniques. The paper I'm using now is, is, is a hot pressed paper. It's very smooth. It don't have much grain. It's always get a paper towel or a piece of paper or something to keep your hands off the paper. So the major technique that we're going to use is going to be cross hatching. So remember, that's called hatch, hatching, H-A-T-C-H. Now cross hatching looks like this. You go in one direction. And the closer you make these lines, the, be the better effect of shadows and shading that you get. That's cross hatching. So lines go in one direction, then it goes in the opposite direction. If I wanted this to be darker, to look darker, I might do lines in one direction Then the opposite direction. Now I'm going to slow down for you guys. And then a different direction. I could also do the cross hatching in ad finitum or forever. So, and I have, notice I have these lines separated 
so that you can see them. So I went in three directions. Now I'm going to go in a different direction. Well, we do the same thing with pencil because we, when we're using pencils, I wanted you to practice using your hatching before you pulled out a stump and start smudging. So uh, a lot of your manuscripts and your illustrations uh, years and years ago was they were made by uh, printmaking uh, and uh, techniques, and they use hash marks. This is pointillism. I hope I'm spelling this correctly. Uh, pointillism, just dots. So this is just practice. These are things that we may use in drawing. I would use pointillism, say for instance, if I was trying to uh, draw wood grain. And I may have to do, yeah, I think in the future I will do an ink drawing where I have to, well, I have to use pointillism. But I, I'm not going to have to with what we're going to draw today. Then you can also use zigzags. And you can also cross hatch with zigzags. You go this direction, then you can go op opposite direction. If you're left handed, you have to figure out how to do this. This is something I made up, I created, okay? But you can also just do, you, you, can, you can just use. Um, marks, any kind of marks. You can do squiggly lines. You can use squiggles. It's very useful. But most of these we, we don't really need. You can use wavy lines. If I line them up like this, it looks kind of like water. You use whatever means necessary to get the point across. What we're going to draw today is going to be a, a plastic cup and a uh, box of crayons. So the cup is made out of plastic. The crayons are made out of cardboard, the box. And it does have crayons in it, so it's heavy. It has weight to it. And I can look at this box and tell that it has crayons in it. And this comes from years and years and years of observation, drawing things, looking at things. So what we're training, we try to train your eye, but we also want to train your hand. So you can start, we're both going to draw this. You can start wherever you want to. Uh, you can start with the cup or you can start with the box. I suggest that you stop for a minute and look at the picture and try to decide where it's going to be on your sheet of paper. Okay, so I know that uh, the paper, I have my paper landscape way so I have a lot of room. And I need to decide how large my box is going to be. Uh, draw large. Don't draw small. Please don't draw small. Draw big. I haven't been saying that. In class, in art class, I always say draw big, draw large. I'm just going to use a regular ink pen. In the future, we may use 
rapidograph pens, but most of you don't have these. These are more like drafting pens. You can also use a Sharpie. Some Sharpies come with a thin point. You have to make sure that the lines don't run together. And some Sharpies have a broader point. A lot of times when, when drawing, I may start with an ink pen and for shadows, heavy shadows, I'll break out my Sharpies. If, if I'm trying to make a serious drawing, I may just use the rapidograph pens and they come in different points. This is a number five, which is pretty broad, but uh, they go all the way down to double, double zero and all the way up to 10. So for today, I just want to use a regular ink pen for a while, see what we can do with it. This is how you get better. A lot of times people use a lot of fancy art supplies before they gain any skills. I'm going to start drawing the box first. I think I know. See, I'm, I'm, I'm actually sketching <laughs> right now. I'm, I'm trying to barely touch the paper. I noticed that the top line of that box is at an angle. This is a box of crayons. I'm sketching so that I can make changes. I'm giving myself some room. There's a lid there and a lid here. So I'm barely touching the paper and I'm using the side of my ink pen. So I'm, it's almost like cheating. Notice that the angle of this side of the box here, that line, this line here is slanted. I'm trying to draw what I see. I'm not going to do too much measuring with my hand, with my pencil. Or, I mean, sorry, with my ink pen. Sometimes I get my, my tongue gets confused when I'm drawing and talking. So you have to forgive me for that. Because I'm concentrating, I'm really concentrating intently, intensely. when you're trying to make something look 3D, three-dimensional, these angles here are very important. Just slant it. So, now the cup starts about one-third of the way, almost to the center, though, of that, uh, of this box. And then there's a triangle here the side of the cup and the bottom of the cup is much lower than the bottom of this box. So, and there's a shadow that falls. So I'm, I'm measuring without measuring. Now this cup, we know that, that it's an oval, it's a, it's a circle, the top, but since we're looking at it, not from the top, but from the side, it turns, it looks like an oval. Now I'm just using my eye. I'm really running my eye across that cup like I'm doing a contour drawing. And some of you guys, you missed the class on contour drawing. I'll, re I'll redo that. Now I have a uh, stigmatism with my eyes, so I rarely get it right the first time. And usually when I draw, I draw on an easel that's standing up like that. So I can see if everything's level. At this angle that I'm at now, it's hard to tell. This smaller circle here is gonna sort of mirror this larger circle or oval. And I know that this angle here is wrong. It should be more, it should be the opposite of this line. This line should be the opposite of that line. So I'm gonna try to make that happen. So 
and I'm going to bring this cup out, this oval out the top of the cup, and there's a lip on the oval. I'm very sketchy with my drawing anyway, and so uh, some of you are not so sketchy. See, I, when I say sketchy, I mean I, I make a lot of lines. I use a lot of lines. So basically, I hope that this is close to being correct. So now what I'm going to go do is go back and uh, sketch these lines in. I'm turning my body. I don't know. Maybe this camera can can show what I'm doing. So since since my uh, picture is not perpendicular like that, but on an incline, uh, since I'm drawing on a uh, drawing table. Watch what my, what, how I'm doing. To get my hand in a good position, because I have these circles in my body that I don't want to use now. And so if I don't want to use this wrist circle, I need to use my arm more. So, man, I'm next, I, I hope I remember to bring a, um, a device the next time to show you. But your arm can make straight lines as well as... Uh, circles. So I'm turning my, I'm trying to get my elbow over so I can make the straight line. I could turn the paper and do the same thing, but I, right now I really don't want to turn the paper. So I'm leaning over and my elbow is resting on the table to help stabil, stabilize my joints a little bit. I'm trying to take the circles out of my joints. I'm barely touching the page. Now, I don't want, I could allow this line to be heavier, and you can. You can draw this any way you want to. You, you, you know, you, you'll be developing your own style. But with my style, I just don't want all my lines to be exactly the same so that I can get more out of the picture. Now I'm sketching this part here, this opening, because this box was hanging in the store. Oh, let me, let me get on my high horse about the importance of art. What well, a lot of us don't, sometimes we don't recognize how important art is and how uh, valuable these art classes are, especially for kids who have talent. Art is a multi-trillion dollar business. Uh, I want you to uh, notice in your, in your house, just ask yourself, Look at every object in your house and ask yourself, was an artist involved somehow with creating what I'm seeing? Where's the art? Everything in your house, everything. Your clothes, your uh, stove. I'm getting ready to um, put in the, this line that's in the background, the table that it's sitting on. And I'm looking, I'm going to uh, look at this area here. Now, I can tell the mistakes that I've already made on this picture by looking at this area here. We'll talk more about that uh, at a later date because it's not so obvious now. I'm going to draw this line lightly and I'm going to pick up this line on the other side. Notice how I just picked my ink pen up to see where that line goes here. Now, the difference is, is that I needed to move this down more in order for this line to be where I'm seeing it uh, here. This is okay.
But I'm not going to do, to do that today. Everybody say thank you to Iantha, who is a teaching artist, but since we do started doing these virtual classes, she's using her skills behind the camera and the computer so that we can bring you these classes. If she's, if she's not behind the computer, we can't bring you the classes. And she knows exactly how we teach. And she knows she, she can keep up with what I'm doing. So thank you, Iantha. So I'm still using my sketch marks here. A lot of, uh, of artists wouldn't have so many lines with the ink drawing. And, and I think the reason why I have uh, so many lines with my ink drawings is because I don't care what I pick up, I'm still Charlie Newton, I have a certain way of approaching drawing. So it could be crayons, ink, pencil, it don't matter. And I think that's where, you, where, where we want to get to. We don't want the, the medium or the materials to determine how you express yourself. We want you to eventually control the material and that's why we keep doing why we keep practicing so this is what I could do I, at first I wanted to start drawing this cup but then I decided well I'm gonna have to draw this uh, box crayon box box of crayons in my hand I might want to rest my hand. So, and that's why I'm now drawing the crayon box. I want to draw some details on this crayon box just for fun, just for you. I'm doing this just for you. You don't have to draw these details. This is a crayon coming here. These triangles, these are triangles. And this line is bent. So I'm looking very close. And I'm making, I'm making mistakes. Let me, I don't want you to think that I'm not making mistakes. If I want to make less mistakes, I need to slow down. And we're using ink. So it's not so easy to fix mistakes. I can't erase ink. And that's why we're practicing with ink. I sketch whenever I can. So that it's easier for me to, to fix mistakes. Now I do not want to do these letters, I am not a calligrapher, and I don't like doing letters at all, but for you, I'm going to attempt to do some of these letters. <laughs> so I made this line here, that was a mistake, but I can kind of shade it in like that, and see, you don't know it's a mistake. Mistake everybody makes mistakes we all make some mistakes in life and some of us learn from mistakes so the object is not to keep from 
making mistakes, but to try to learn from mistakes. I am not going to do these letters unless I have time, so I don't want to. I can get distracted easily when I start drawing. Now, if I was by myself doing this, it wouldn't matter. The timing wouldn't matter, but we are, we have limited time for this class. I'm actually making a lot of mistakes. But I can see them. So the worst thing is when you're making mistakes, you can't see. Uh, so this is where uh, the word Crayola would go. This is the picture of the crayons here. I'm just going to indicate this. I'll do, if I decide to go back and do detail, I can change it. I really wanted to make this box uh, a little bit uh, longer. But I want to get to the point where you can see how we can use cross hatching. So I'm going to stop with the crayon box for now and um, go to the shadow that's behind the box. So I'm going to do some cross hatching for this. You notice that uh, an ink pen is smoother. Now I have some highlights in this glass that I'm going to draw so that I'll know or have an idea of where not to put hash marks behind the glass. Now if I just put hash marks going in one direction you get the feeling of uh, it looks gray. There's a shadow being cast from the corner of this box, the bottom of this box. So I'm going to put some hash marks here going in one direction and then I'm going to draw some hash marks going in another direction. Notice I, again I skipped over these highlights here that I drew in have some highlights here too on the other side that don't matter that as much but watch me go back with my cross hatching do I have 30 minutes left Iantha yeah. okay I'm going to do the same with the shadow in the back of the box. I'm going to use these same hatch marks going in the same direction for continuity. I'm going to try to stop my pen on this line or close to the line anyway. Now I'm going I am going to go back to and do some I'm going to get my hash marks a little bit closer. You notice the closer my marks are, the darker the shadow appears to be. I'm going to do the same over here. I don't want everything too uniform. Un uniformity it's so boring in art. So at least I have one gray shadow and a darker gray shadow here. I'm going to draw this shadow. That's a shadow that, that comes back here because we have several light sources in the studio. We have overhead lights and If you have one light source, uh, then it's easier to draw shadows, to see your shadows. But when you have multiple light sources, like in a classroom, which this is, we have uh, several fluorescent lighting overhead as well as the studio lights so that you can see us. Now I know that I don't want this space here as white as this space here 
and if I can push it back with some hash marks but I want I want it to be uh, maybe lighter than this the wall or the background wall so I'm just gonna do something like that now this is too much the same so now I've made a decision to go ahead and put some hash marks behind this box on this wall, this white wall here. Drawing with ink pen. Drawing with ink pen. Notice this is still lighter than the uh, this shadow that's underneath the box. So I won't I'm, st I'm still using my sensitivity as far as not pressing down on the paper and lightly touching the paper even though I'm using ink. Okay, try to keep everything loose. Okay, now I'm going to go to this glass and I'm going back to the box. So now I'm trying to get uh, creative. So. And what I do may not work. I want to really accentuate the, the darkness and the refractions that's on this part of the glass. So I'm, I'm doubling up this line right here, but not all the way down to the bottom because the, this box is casting a shadow on the glass. But right away, what we see is it, begin to make the glass look a little bit more round. Also, the lip of the glass on the left hand side, that's a little dark area here. Re remember, contour drawing, I'm using what we learned from contour drawing to look close, to, to really slow your eye down and imagine that you are an ant crawling on the rim of this glass. Now I can see everything. So I'm making this side darker than the front. And I'm gonna let the darkness, these dark lines kind of trail around a little bit. But I'm varying the line. We'll talk more about line variation. There's so much to talk about. As I'm looking closer, I, s I see I'm beginning to see some shapes in this glass but I want to try something that I believe is going to work. So there's a, I'm going to sketch a shape that I see in this glass. I'm looking at the back side of this glass here. And I'm going to use some, draw some hash marks that are going to mirror the curve of this top line, this back line here this line, this curve of this oval. So the marks I'm drawing are curved. It's the same curve. So I'm wanting to get the curvature of this glass. That's why I'm doing it that way. There's also another shade shadow going down here, this side here, and here. There's uh, a distortion of the table, the end of the table in the background. I'm going to draw that distortion. And that's because of the curvature of the glass. The line bends. It bends what we're seeing. And then it continues on this side. Straight. Now I can go back here. One of the things that took me the longest to understand, and that's the value of working the entire picture, going from one side of the picture to the other at the same time. So don't just draw, don't just, just scroll, you know, just bounce back and forth when you're drawing. I'm going to draw some shadows in the back of the glass here, still using this curvature. And I'm trying to make some, some hatch marks that's not as heavy because this glass is in front of the box. 
I'm still following the curvature, this line here. It's the same marks. When I say I'm following this curve, let me demonstrate to you what I mean, just in case you're not tracking with me. I need to get a marker. So there's an oval on this cup, this glass, this cup, this oval here. So I'm going to use a wide marker so that you can see what I'm doing. So since this line here, this curve here, is what I'm following. So, see that? That's what I'm talking about. I'm just redrawing this section of line as I go down the back of the glass. Because the glass is round, and I want to get a sensation of feeling that glass here. So as I'm drawing the shadows uh, in the back here, it's going to help, hopefully. And I say hopefully because, you know, everything don't ever, don't always work out. make this look this glass I want to hopefully make help to make this glass look transparent now since my I can't turn my wrist around like that I'm, I'm turning the paper that's the value of drawing on <laughs> on, on a dra drafting table you can turn the paper or drawing small on small sheet of paper I just finished a painting that's 107 about 107 uh, inches by 80 some inches I can't turn that painting I could but it's in oil paints so I can't without ruining the painting so there are some advantages sometimes to uh, drawing small okay so now I'm like I want to do some cross hatching here which I may do May do a little cross hatching. I just want some shadow. I want some to shade the back of the glass here. And these little marks that I made, these straight lines going down uh, like that, uh, I'm using those to decide where my marks go. I want, I'm going to go ahead and jump to the bottom of the inside of this plastic cup. I don't know why I keep calling it glass. It's plastic. And draw some shadows using hatch marks. And I'm going to hope to remember to leave some bits of paper that's totally white. As highlights. I'm going to go to the bottom of the cup and put in some darker marks to help the cup look like it's grounded. It's sitting down on something. Now I just know I'm going to pick up the shadow in the back of the cup. That's the basic shape of the shadow. And that's another shape here. Uh, you have to look close. Now in class, what I'll do for kids, and if you're 10 or 12 years old, you can grasp this, this 10 to 12, well, 10 and older, even maybe nine. Some, I've had students who can grasp this. I would just set up the, the still life and I would trace the shadows. I would set up the still life on a white sheet of paper. Then I would actually trace the shadows in for them, for them to see, to help them to see. So I can't wait till we start having classes again after the pandemic there's a lot of things that you can learn that you can't that I can do for you when I'm in your presence look out for some classes this summer starting in June uh, look at our Facebook page we're going to have some semi-private classes on zoom this summer as an art camp for you guys. We also, we're going to continue to have these classes 
uh, every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday as well. So you're going to have several opportunities that you can choose from. There is a small fee for the class in June to help pay for the art supplies. We will distribute the supplies for that. But we're also going to distribute some art supplies for these classes that we're having uh, uh, now. We're just trying to get free art to kids. All kids. But especially kids who might not have the resources to pay for art classes. That, Like myself. So you need to know when to start, stop. I'm trying to decide when to stop drawing on this glass. And I may decide to go back. And to make lines, I don't have to just draw what I see. I can draw what I feel. If I feel that a certain line is going to help, like this line I just drew, I could be wrong. It's OK to be wrong, to make mistakes. That's how you learn. You learn like, okay, I'll you know, do that again. <laughs> those, those, those are good lessons. Those are, the matter of fact, the best lessons, to learn what doesn't work. But how are you going to know what doesn't work if you never try? And what doesn't work for me may work for you. It's a strange thing about art. We're, we are all different. You will never draw like I draw, and I will never draw the same way that you draw, because we are all individuals. So, that's a good thing, but you have to practice, because practice makes perfect. So, I think I'm getting the feeling of this cup now, and it, it may be time to stop. I'm, I'm doing, I'm not going to suggest you do this, I'm making some light lines that even cross over the highlights a little bit. Now, I'm, now, I'm just trying to use my marks. I could not even, I don't even need to look at the um, still life setup that I have. I have this still life set up in front of me. And uh, now it's all about the drawing. Eighteen minutes. 18 minutes. Oh, great. We're doing great. Now it's all about the drawing. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to place a shadow on this side of the box because I believe that the darker line, just notice how the darker marks bring this cup in front of the box. So I could strengthen this line here because of the, wa the width of the lines that I used on the left side of the cup. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to darken some this side of the box uh, to try to make this box look a little bit more three-dimensional. One thing that I didn't mention, drawing a with ink pen is all about line. We're doing a line drawing. A line drawing. Say that with me. Line drawing. Line. We're drawing with lines. So the drawing is all about lines. So if I do something like this, it's okay. I'm going to push this box forward. So I'm going to use lines. This is a line drawing. So it's all about lines. What are the lines doing? It's not about the crayon box. It's not about the cup. It's about lines. Okay? <laughs> that's, so, that's what I'm thinking about now. I'm thinking about how can I use lines to make a statement? I'm going to go ahead and cross hatch here. Now, if I just stop here and not 
critique myself. This don't work because this is too much like that. It's the same gradation. I want this to be much darker. But I have room to play with. So now I'm going to think about this box is, has a green color here. So I'm going to use my hash marks to think about the value uh, that I'm getting from the green. And I, all I have to work with are black lines. So all of a sudden, this at least this part, the bottom part is getting darker. So I'm thinking about the value changes. When I say value, I mean the shade, the value changes that's going on with this box. I'm using the design that's on this box. You know what? I had started talking about looking at things in your house. Look at your clothes, your, your sneakers. Uh, if you have a rug on the floor, the patterns on the rug. Look at your chairs, your kitchen table. All these things had to be visualized with a drawing or a sketch. I did something very strange here. I don't even know what I did. I'm going to try to fix it. Okay. So everything had to be created by somebody who could draw. Everything. Visualize with the sketch. I know you may say, well, the youth computer design, but the person could still draw. They drew with a computer. It was still drawing. And if you can't draw without a computer, your computer drawing will be boring and uh, not good at all. So, But you see, well, can you see how uh, I'm trying to make this box stand out in space by using dark lines. You could do it the opposite way. I could have the box much lighter than the background to do the same thing. So it's very, it's, it's, it's not easy. But when you think about lines, it becomes a little bit simpler. So now I have time to do a little bit more detail. Let me know when it's five minutes, I answer. Or ten. Let me know when it's ten minutes, because I can I may stop sooner. Ten minutes is two minutes. <laughs> Excuse me? In two minutes is ten minutes. Okay. I don't want to overwork this thing. So I still, I'm going to indicate some of these, some of the uh, uh, numbers and letters and the, uh, words on this box. I'm, like I said, I'm not a calligrapher, so it doesn't interest me, the words. But the design does interest me. So I'm going to sketch the letters. And I'll go into as much detail that, that I think it's necessary to, to make this, you know, sort of realistic, more realistic in a way. So I'm not a calligrapher. Now, my hat goes out to people who tr make billboards and posters. Of course, now it's all done by computer. 
but uh, there was a time when it was done by hand, and those people have amazing skills, and I realized that. Commercial artist. I'm not a commercial artist, so I'm not that interested in um, making making uh, the mundane details so important. I just wanted to be to speak as far as so that you would know what this is that I'm drawing. When I want to put something back in space, I put some, use hash marks. <laughs> As you can see, I'm very sketchy. I'm a very sketchy person. There are a lot of mistakes on here that I see and some of you can see and I'm, and I'm sure the artists can see that these mistakes. But you know, what, it, what is my goal? I'm not a commercial artist. If I was, I would uh, make everything more exact. So, my purpose is something else. Commercial artists, their job is to get you to pick up this box of crayon. So they come up with a design concept that's going to draw the kids eyes that's why they use a lot of red a lot of yellow primary colors green but a lot, you have to make sure you use the reds it's going to catch the eye because it's a hot color bubble letters Uh, I think um, your graffiti artists do the same thing. They want to catch the eye. And they want to catch your eye really fast. So I'm using hash marks here to try to push this box behind the cup, but in front of the wall. This, I'm going to leave it at this because I believe I'm making the statement that I want to make with this drawing. This is a line drawing with an ink pen, a regular ink pen. I did, uh, I was uh, doing prison ministry for about 15 years and there were a lot of uh, guys that could draw with ink pens, and they would draw on um, envelopes. They could not have the entire pen, but they could use the, this part of the pen because it's it's weak, and you can't uh, use it as a weapon. And they would draw on envelopes, envelopes to send to their uh, family members and loved ones during the holidays. And so I saw some amazing drawings. I also have seen Af African artists draw with ink pen to do some amazing things. If I can find, I look in my books to see if I can find uh, some of those, those artists, but they did some amazing things with ink pen. Uh, most of us, when we are first learning how to draw, we do draw with ink pens. A lot of people never put that ink pen down. And you can develop your skills with this. You, you can do some amazing things with this. All you have to do is put your mind to it and uh, practice make perfect and you keep working on it and some awesome things are going to happen. So I want to encourage you to keep drawing and to understand how important art is Everything in your house began with a drawing. Your house began with a drawing. Some architect first drew an idea down, sketched an idea down, even before 
they put it on the uh, computer for a CAD design. So art is everywhere and awesome opportunities in the art field and in the art, art market. Photography, all of the arts, television, when you look at television, all, all, that's arts. That's an art form. All, all you see, you're seeing is art. It's valuable. So I want to encourage you to use your talent and your ability and to uh, celebrate your talents and work hard on it and have fun with it. Have fun because it is fun. I, I've enjoyed myself today. Thank you for joining me. Until next time, remember, art is for everyone. Bye-bye.